So welcome to this Ask an Expert session. I'm actually travelling at the moment, so I'm having to do this bit ad hoc in my in my hotel room. But hopefully uh, we'll get some some useful video here. So I've put together um, the top questions, the top liked questions. There are the top three there, and I also added one of my own. There was a lot of discussion in the discussion sessions about the average speed in the traffic model, minimi minimizing the number of messages. And that's a, actually a very very interesting topic to talk about. So I wanted to talk about that that here. But the top question was what are the main programming languages in current use for supercomputing and what might be the popular languages in the future? So I've got a slide here to show uh, what you'd have seen if you looked at the Archer application which shows the, the um, details of the different codes and you'll see there it's dominated by Fortran which surprised a few people. Now this um, picture is somewhat misleading in that this is the programming languages used by the most popular packages that are run and in fact, um, although um, the most popular packages that are run are written in Fortran, uh, that, that doesn't mean that people are developing in Fortran. At least, doesn't mean that Archer users are developing in Fortran. A lot of these packages are centrally maintained by um, collaborations, and they have to be written in Fortran, and they're very widely used. But actually, uh, Andy Turner, who produced this website web uh, page, did a study of um, the way that people compile codes and actually the majority of compilation on Arch was done using C, C, C++ so the major software development on Arch seems to be in C, C++ all the most established packages um, often their computational chemistry packages are written in Fortran. Now looking to the future um, there's always a, a kind of a tension in any language between it being easy to use and being uh, um, performant uh, being very high performance and one of the problems is that it doesn't look likely to me there'll be any special parallel programming languages coming out in the future there's a number of reasons for that first of all it's actually fundamentally a very very difficult problem to design a language that can parallelize a program automatically especially on a distributed memory parallel machine especially for message passing now as parallel programming at least in the shared memory model uh, becomes more popular as devices like your laptop and mobile phones can grow to have more and more cores. Uh, possibly we'll get more effort put into uh, programming languages which are dedicated at, at the shared variables model programming in threads on a shared memory computer. However, compilers and languages take you know thousands of man years to develop uh, to maturity and um, distributed memory programming is still more of a niche uh, market. It's only very large parallel computers which have this distributed memory architecture. So parallel programming in the message passing model is still very much done by hand and um, I don't think that any language is really going to make great inroads into that. Uh, there have been attempts, people have written languages, most modernly uh, modern languages are that was mentioned on the on the website on the discussion session things like X10 which take a very high level approach and basically you say this is my problem could you and you describe it and it's the compiler and the runtime's job to distribute that that does turn out to be very difficult and the problem in distributed memory is if you ever make a mistake or do something suboptimally the overhead is enormous now in the shared variables model with a shared memory computer if you can't quite work out how to parallelize a section, you can just say, OK, we'll do it all on one thread. It's like having a shared whiteboard. And if there's something you, that you just can't parallelize amongst the workers, you just say, look, to one worker, just go and do it. And that worker can, that person, that thread can do the calculation on the shared whiteboard and you can move on. There's clearly some overhead to that. Only one worker is working during that phase, but it might not be that uh, high an overhead. The problem in message passing with distributed memory is if you ever say, here's a piece of a calculation I can't do it in parallel, I'll just do it serially, you have to bring all the data back to some master process, which you might not even be able to do for memory con uh, memory constraints. And even if you could, there's a massive overhead of collecting the data together, doing the calculation, then broadcasting the data back out again. So the fact that the data is distributed, just like we saw in the parallel traffic model with, with the distributed memory approach, means that it's very, very difficult to analyze a program uh, in its entirety. It's very difficult to have a language we can do that for you. Now, actually, a slight counterexample to that is rather than addressing the, the generic problem of parallelizing a random program, you might say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a language which is which is um, hardwired, which is optimized for a particular application. You might say, I have a weather forecasting, which is based on, on particular grids, and, and you have certain um, features 
there. And you might say, I'm going to develop a language which is which is dedicated to making parallel weather forecasting codes work well. Now you can do that. That's a much um, more constrained problem. And the way that people do that is they take a language like Python or C++ and effectively write what we call a domain-specific language. You write classes and templates in C++, you extend Python uh, in a way that it looks like it's a new language. It isn't really a new language, it's just Python or C++, but you have various libraries or classes which, which are dedicated to your particular problem. And that works because although the, the, the high-level infrastructure, um, that the high-level code might be written in Python or C++ and might not necessarily be that efficient, you can take um, particular operations and implement them very efficiently. And that's already happened in things like Python. Python's become very popular for scientific and technical programming because it's very uh, easy to use, but it can run very, very slowly. However, what people have done is they've identified those operations which scientific and technical programming comp computational scientists use a lot, uh, large arrays, matrix operations, and written libraries, they're called SciPy and NumPy, which optimize them away. So if you take a uh, you don't try and write a language which addresses any arbitrary program, but you say I'm going to write a particular set of libraries, or what we call, as I said, a domain-specific language for a class of problems, then that is tractable. And so that seems to be the way things are going. High-level programs might start to be written more in Python and C++ because of their flexibility, but they'll target particular problems and under the hood the low level stuff might still be written in C or Fortran but you as a user won't see that you're programming quite a high level language which is which is designed for your particular problem class and that will make it easy to program but you'll get performance because under the hood that the at runtime it's using uh, well established and optimized libraries and still probably under the hood using C and Fortran and message passing